<laughs> hey, everyone. I'm your host, Vanessa Lachey. And obviously, I'm Nick Lachey. <laughs> Welcome to the Love is Blind reunion. Yeah! <laughs> I love it. I wish you could feel the energy in this room. Now, we have seen all of our contestants fall blindly in love for each other. They've connected emotionally and physically. They have made out. They've broken up. They've made up. And some of them even made it down the aisle. That's right. We're here today to catch up with the participants and talk about the results of this blind love experiment and their reactions to seeing it all play out on screen. It's just crazy to think that, you know, a couple months ago I was single, I was living the life, and the journey has just brought me here. Will you marry me? Will you marry me? Will you marry me? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I will marry you. I've spent every second focusing on finding my wife. Oh my gosh. <laughs> My favorite was Barnett. He made me laugh so much. Hi. Hi. Okay. I know we're going to have a lot of challenges in the real world, but I wouldn't change anything about him. You guys, it's so good to see yeah. you all again. Yes. Yeah. Right? Okay, yeah. Flash so I feel like a family reunion, yeah. you know? Yeah. 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 Like a true family reunion with, that you kind of don't want to go to. <laughs> <laughs> I think the first thing we should do is, is kick this whole thing off with some <clears throat> quick updates from you guys. Raise your hand if you are currently single. Okay. Raise your hand if you are married to your fiance from the experiment. Wow. Uh, beauty. All right. Oh. All right. Oh. All right, guys, raise your hand if you are currently in a relationship. Okay. Kenny. Yeah, I guess that would also be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Raise your hand if you're currently in a relationship with your fiance from the experiment. Huh? Oh. Yes! Yeah. So what goes around comes around. So oh, I can't wait. Oh, I can't wait. This is good already. We're I barely yeah. started here. <laughs> Nick, I don't know about you. I'm going to need some details. A lot more details. A lot of details. Yep. We had Kenny and Kelly. Yeah. Yep. Hey, guys. Hi. How's it going? So what's going on? Yeah, so I am still single. Um, but I did a few, like, career transitions since the show. I also dated one of my best friends since the show. And... He was actually at my at our wedding. Oh my god! <laughs> actually at our wedding. Wow. But you know, I think since okay. the show, it's been a lot of um, it's been a lot of self growth. Okay. You know, from what yeah. I learned from the show, f taking that into that relationship. How about you, Kenny? Uh, honestly, uh, not to sugarcoat it, but uh, could not be doing better. This experiment, uh, whether I understood it or not, allowed me to find the person I'm with today. Aww. Because it allowed me to open myself up to, to truly be vulnerable, and uh, I, I have the best girlfriend uh, for me. And I'm so. sure you guys are documenting everything on camera. I've actually learned that is not serious? a good thing. So. <laughs> Amber and Barnett, you guys, you got married in our experiment, and you were still together. Fill us in. What's well, going on? I haven't killed him yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've been doing great. Learning about ourselves while we've been traveling and doing fun stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been, it's been awesome. Learning about it's been awesome. We did move closer to the city now. Our house was haunted, y'all. <laughs> not a fan. <laughs> She Different thinks it was ghosts. haunted, I think it was dust, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so ever since the show, we've been followed by bad spirits. Oh my god. All right, on that note. So what about you, Jessica? What have you been up to? Honestly, you know, we've all just kind of seen this all play out. There were some really cringeworthy moments for me watching it back that I've been able to reflect on. It was kind of it was kind of rough for me, you know, when I realized that things weren't really, you know, going the way that I hoped that they would. So I uh, took this past year, um, went back home to Chicago for six months just to be, you know, closer to my family and, and kind of heal up a little bit and kind of reflect and figure out, you know, how to how to change course. And then now I'm out in LA, mm -hmm. and um, I've just recently started dating again. So I love doing that. Great. I love that. Carlton. Yes. So uh, what's been going on since the experiment? I've really just been working on Carlton. Um, I'm single still. I've taken some self-reflection. Obviously, what happened on the show was major in my life. Um, it was very important to me to preserve my personal space and my mental space because subject matters like that could take you down a dark road. So in the back of your mind, you're thinking, oh my God, did I really just share my entire life? Like, yeah. there's no other secret. You yeah. get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, on one end, I feel very free since doing the show, but then on another end, I'm just very disappointed that, like, love didn't work out the way that I wanted for yeah. it to. What you did mm -hmm. and confronting that and doing that on 
a television show like this takes an incredible amount of bravery. Thank man. you. I know we were all very, very proud of you for... Thank you so for, much. For, ...for doing that. Still yeah. processing it. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of yeah. weird sometimes, but I'm, I'm proud at the end of the day. Damien and G. <laughs> so y'all are together? Please, dish. We are so together. <laughs> like every single day, waking up next to each other and going to the gym together. I don't want to lose this. I just don't. That's awesome. And I did it. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, okay. So Diamond, have you been since the show? I've been great. I've been waiting on Beyonce to call me. No, Because <laughs> everybody's been loving that for some reason, um, that I quoted her. <laughs> but anyways, back to me. Um, everything's been great. I'm working on my PhD, so I'm yeah. going back to wow, school. Wow, congratulations. Hey, guys. And um, I know for each and every one of us can say that this was like a very hard thing to open up to the world and allow people to come in and be in judge. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, we have to really like take that all in and also try to be able to cope with it. Yes, yes. especially in this day and age when you've got those keyboard warriors. Yes. Well, we'll get to those. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Lauren and Cameron, yeah. so you guys, just like Amber and Barnett, found love in this experiment, got married, and are still together. We're That's still right. together. Yeah. So what's happening? What's going on? Oh, life for us has been really, really good. I mean, each and every day is like, our own little experiment because we're still learning each other, you know, even though we've been married for over a year now. Yeah. Trust me, that never now. that never stops. But I've seriously never been as happy as I am with Aww. Cameron. Like, Aww. he makes me so happy. I right? can't wait to dive into that love story. And I'm gonna come up here to Mark. How are you? I'm good. As a man, yeah. I think I learned more about vulnerability, communication, and just, I don't know, just more about myself. I think I can speak for everybody here that like, it was totally worth the price of admission. Mm -hmm. um, and. Yeah, life's been, life's been good. And you're single now? Yes, I am single. So guys, <laughs> it's probably one of the most asked questions, but how was it dating in the pods? I know I said myself a lot that it was uh, possible that this could work for me, but I honestly, I didn't think it was probable. I went on the show thinking like, you know, it's a chance to find love. Why not? Let's see what happens, but... Yeah. yeah. I mean, hey, I was as skeptical as anyone was probably watching coming into this. Is there anything that in a pod where you're like, this is not the one? Like, it was it was mm. an instant, like... <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. 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 He was like, oh, Diamond, you're yeah. a stripper. She was like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. You would have given me a second chance. I thought I could have turned you. <laughs> 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 trying to be smooth. <laughs> Barnett, you, had, you had enough going on as it was. Oh, and I'm yeah. so Nobody sorry that I fell asleep on Amber. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, in all fairness, in this process, it was, so it was exhausting. Yeah. And the second date, they... Nobody she was got all to over me Carlton. on the second date. Get out of here. Nobody <laughs> got to see Carlton say, oh my God, you're so interesting. I wish I had known this on the first date. Okay? <laughs> so no, I am not boring. <laughs> Barnett and Diamond, you guys didn't connect, but as I as I mentioned, I love you, you had you had a pretty you had a pretty active thing going on in, in terms of dating in the pods, and, and there was a lot going on there. I, I dated like I mean, 15 women. <laughs> yeah. Should, yeah. We, should we watch a clip? Oh. I, I think, I think, so. we, should watch, I think we should watch a clip. LC, we're very freaking similar, and it's like, what's going on here? <laughs> like, why are we so alike? With Amber, she excites me, but she also scares the living hell out of me. Hey, B. Hey, girl. I think Jessica is my number one, because every time I talk to her, I mean, it's there's like mad goosebumps. <laughs> I love everything about these girls, but all in different ways, and I'm like, what the hell? What the hell am I supposed to do? About this a little bit. Now we just watched that clip and seeing how secure Amber and Jessica and Elsie all felt about their relationship with you in the pods. Watching that and looking back, would you have done anything differently? Actually, no. The last couple years before I went on the show, I was kind of like emotionally like empty. I had no like connections. Like I couldn't figure myself out. Excuse my spit, but um, <laughs> so get a napkin, smooth. please. <laughs> so smooth. <laughs> or a bib. Or yeah. a bib. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, um, so it's 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 <clears throat> it's really crazy to go to a place where you know you like like you actually start opening up and and you feel people like accepting your emotions that you've never like really shown to anybody. So it's just it was it was kind of crazy, you know. Yeah. I think I think most people could attest to that um, that I'm not very like I'm not super good with girls actually, so it's kind of funny to see it. But uh, I don't know. I guess just like when you think back to it and you and and, and you sit you're sitting there like trying to figure out like who you know 
would be the best wife, you kind of want to see what they think about even getting married. And I, I may not have used the best words like saying that I would propose to you tomorrow or something like that, but I feel like it's, it gives you a good idea of how someone's going to react to the thought of even marrying you. So, Do you feel like you have any regrets with how things went down? I always that? regret everything I say, so... <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, um. no, I don't regret anything, really. I think that maybe there are better words to use to fill those feelings out. But, I mean, really, I don't regret it because it got me to where I am today, so. Everyone has a different path that they take on, on something like this. And so that was your... That was your journey. As I see him, he's like cracking his knuckles. And I feel you, like, I'm a little uncomfortable. So you guys are actually seeing this oh, yeah. process. And, like, for Amber, you knew. You knew, because in the on the women's side, you're like, you knew this. There was a very strong sense of girl power over there, and we were all leaning on each other a lot, and we were very supportive and open about who we were all interested in. And when it got to the point that Elsie and I realized, like, we both really cared about Barnett, we came to a mutual decision, like, can we just not talk about our dates with him? And she was really respectful about that. So Jessica coming out of left field, trying to tell me that he proposed to her that night. Maybe he's like having issues, but he told me tonight that he just doesn't know what he wants and he's fucked up in his head. That's what he told me. After last night, literally told me he was gonna marry me. I was not happy. I confronted Matt about Jessica. And I, I said, what the hell? What's going on here? Like, what, what are you thinking? What are you doing? What do you want? He told me he was trying to, to figure things out and feel it out. And he was like, you know, he shouldn't have said that. Like, that, that wasn't how he meant it. I'm like, okay, that's not how you meant it. I believe you. Like, that was all, like, I, he, I trusted him. As far as I was concerned, that was nothing after the fact. So to see her throwing herself at him in Mexico, bitch, you're shysty. You're so fake. Coming to my face like we were cool, you were so fake. I think you were a very disingenuous person. And you know what? I hope seeing this, you do grow from it because that is not what the world needs is women that go behind people's backs like that. You were engaged to another man that you were leading on. He was engaged, he made his choice. Anywho, so no, I'm not super happy seeing that, but I would have been a lot more comfortable had somebody else said like, hey, I'm still having feelings for him. Do you think you should have come forward sooner? Do you think I still respect the way that I kept it to myself? Yeah, so, I mean, <clears throat> for me, um, you know, obviously there's, to go back to kind of Barnett's point, that I really wanted to see how my relationship was with everyone. I mean, everyone needs to realize this was days, not weeks, that we're trying to find a connection to spend forever with someone. So I really wanted to vet everything out. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I was rejected by Barnett. I didn't take that very well. Seeing that play out is brutal, you know? So I was really trying to, you know, keep myself open and, and work that all out. I don't think that necessarily played out, but I do, Definitely owe a major apology to to you, Amber, you know, and, and to Barnett, who, you know, I super respect them both. I respect their relationship. Um, and, you know, it definitely was not good of me to, to even ever question that. So I, I apologize and I have nothing but the most respect for you both and wish you nothing but the best. And I'm just happy that I was able to participate in an experiment where this does work out, you know, and there are happy married couples. It's, I have, I have no hard feelings towards you whatsoever, at all. I have a whole lot of respect for you for, for yeah. coming here and being a part of this and, and, and being big enough to say I messed up and I apologize. I want to clear this here. If she is apologizing, do you accept that apology or is there something that you're like, I just wish that this would have happened so that we can all My, move on? I had a full understanding of what this experiment was and I knew that she may have had a crush on him still. And the fact that she was going to him behind my back with me in the same room, saying these things, like, are you sure this is what you want? Yeah, that bothered me. Because yeah. if you still have feelings for my husband and you're engaged to my friend, like, the least you can do is be honest with everybody else about where you were at. And I fully believe in being upfront and on, I have no filter. As you guys seen, I have no filter. So what I needed, to be okay with this was for her to say, like, look, I'm still feeling him. I'm still confused. So that I'm not sitting there looking like a fool, thinking, like, we're cool, we're friends. Well, I don't know that you were looking like a fool because you got the guy, but she had her process. So do you accept an apology now, or are you like, I still need a minute to kind of process? <laughs> I accept the intent behind the apology. 
I can't be fully there yet. Yeah. And that's okay. Well, the process continues. All right, well, every one of you sitting here today decided to choose to spend the rest of your life with someone sight unseen. Mm -mm. So let's hear more about what was going through your minds when you saw each other for the very first time. Oh, oh. oh God. <laughs> you doing? Oh, my God. <laughs> Who surprised you the most when you guys saw them in person? Because you obviously talked to everybody. Like, everybody dated. Even for that speed date round, everybody right. dated. So who did you see that you were like, wow? Uh, I'd say Lauren, honestly, because you and I talked, I think, twice. Or mm -hmm. two, we dated twice. Um, <laughs> and no, I mean, you're, you're captivating. You're stunning. Yeah. It shines through. Oh. I can yeah. agree to that. I mean, yeah. It, yeah. It, it is funny. I love you, Kim. <clears throat> but <laughs> <laughs> it, it is because, like, me and Lauren, I, I think we dated every day up till the yeah, point of engagement. We, yeah. we dated every single day, we and we had the best conversation. We would laugh like and all the time. <laughs> we started talking in Star Wars voices. <laughs> <laughs> we really did. Wait a minute. We got to see a Star Wars date right now. Like, what's your, oh what's your voice? Yeah. So long ago. Yeah. It's just like, hey, Damien. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, Hi, Lauren. <laughs> Hi, Lauren. I was trying to do like the Yoda thing, but I, I'm not getting casted for Star Wars, but. <laughs> <laughs> I was really surprised to see Mark. I really was. He's actually really attractive. Like he's a cool good looking here. guy. <laughs> <laughs> he has, you know, he wears his heart on his sleeve, so I really thought like mm. he's yeah. a beautiful person. Yeah. yeah. Well, well you know, y'all are both single, right? Yeah, I'm <laughs> saying we have a pot in our garage. You guys are <laughs> home. But we already seen each other, so. <laughs> We've talked a lot about the emotional connection that, that all of you, I think, found on this show, but you guys took that emotional connection and you developed a, a physical connection. And obviously with that, face-to-face -face time, you know, brings new challenges, brings new obstacles to light, and reality really started to sink in. We'll see right here. Diamond? Yes. Will you be my wife? Oh my God. Will you marry me? <laughs> yes. You will? Yes. Baby! <laughs> All the women keep us on suspense. I know, right? <laughs> what is it like, Carlton Diamond, to, to see that? I get emotional. I really do, because to actually hear someone actually say, like, do you want to be my queen? Do you want to be my wife? I've never heard that before. And to hear those words, you know, just, a lot of us have been wanting that for a long time. As you see, I was crying like a baby because I've never heard those words. I didn't even know how to respond to it other than that I knew I wanted to do this. Mm -hmm. Carlton, you said it's a lot. Of yeah, it's a lot. It's, uh, I think it just goes back to, like, no one will fully ever understand what was going through my head in that moment. That day, still to this day, by far, is the happiest day of my life. Yeah. Like, to the point where I'm actively trying to, like, top it so that we can just, like, move to the next chapter of my life. Well, as we all know, once Carlton and Diamond got to Mexico, the relationship shifted almost immediately, and it came to a head the morning after you, Carlton, opened up to Diamond about your past relationships. About I'm okay how you took with or this. without this situation. I am okay. Boy, oh, you know what? Like, I ain't got time okay. for this because you having a bad attitude. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, this it. not this not for you. Have your moment. You have your moment. I don't I care if you're not fucking with me. I, I gave you one. your ring back. I don't give a I fuck about a ring. That. Fuck a ring. Fuck a ring. <laughs> this is why I don't deal with bitches like you. Oh, I'm a bitch now. You gonna call me a bitch in my face? I don't deal with women like you. you. Fuck you. Fuck you, fucker. Nah, said, fuck like me. Fuck you. Bye. Kids, look. And watch my ass to the next dick no, boy. No, watch your wig, because you, it keeps sliding. They've the been sliding since you day one. You think I am? Your wig been you sliding ain't married since day to one. No average bitch boy. Peace out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh. I first of all want to thank both Carlton and Diamond for coming here today for mm -hmm. the reunion. I know that this has been hard, um, and kind of what I was talking about earlier, we have a lot of keyboard warriors, 
and a lot of the fans have voiced their opinions. So I'll start with you, Carlton. How are you feeling being here? Um, so it's very awkward. It's obviously something new for me. Um, like I've gotten death threats. It brings you to a very dark space. Um, the biggest misconception is that fluid people are just like rabbits, just hopping around, sleeping with everyone, talking to both parties at the same time, and that we have no self-control sexually. And I think it's very unfair. And it's a very ignorant assumption for anyone to make. Out of everything, I think I've been more concerned with Diamond and like her backlash. And I just want to make it clear that the woman that I fell in love with, I don't, I've never felt that she was biphobic, homophobic, um, or that she wouldn't love me. I just was afraid that we would have some issues that we would have to work through. The types of feedback that I've been getting online, it's no reflection of who I am. Now, do I deserve some of the feedback? Yes, I do, because I made a horrible mistake and indirectly called her out of her name. That is something that should have never happened. There's no excuse. Um, and I told myself, you know, before the show, start, I want to at least have be comfortable with him in the same room. And I didn't want any animosity or any tension towards us. I felt like I could at least do that, at least hear what he have to say. Mm -hmm. And then he did apologize. Who initiated that, that contact? I think it was like happy holidays or your birthday. That's how we were able to move forward and even be here. Because like he said, he was getting remarks and people attacking him. I'm getting the same thing. I've gotten death threats as well. I've gotten a lot of, been called those names. I was really hurt by that. And I'm like, well, why would they, people are seeing it in a totally different perspective. My goal right there in that scene was to just talk to them and get more understanding because I didn't know about it. You know, I didn't want it to get crazy and out of control and me going off and coming out of my character because that's <clears> not who I am. Um, although, if you do mess with me, I do have a tendency to, like, put my foot down. Yeah. You were just spewing words, and I know, sitting here watching you watch that, you're mortified. You're like, mm -hmm. this is not me. Mm -hmm. So if you had an opportunity now to, to write that scene, and I'll start with you, Diamond, what would you, what would you want to say? So I guess, in my way, maybe I should have just approached it a lot differently and being more comforting and um, maybe approach it in a way of saying that, you know, I respect you as a person. All right. Yeah, I'm good. Would you have told her sooner? And do you think that would have made a difference? I would have done whatever it takes to be sitting on the couch as happy as these people, even these people. I would have done whatever it took had I known then that that's what it took to sit here happily married, do you know? To her. Yeah. I think that um, in that moment, I felt I went back into my shell it was a show that was difficult breaking out of, not to mention in front of the world. Um, and once something just felt like it wasn't right, I immediately let fear sink in and like, oh, I have to go back into Carlton's the only person who will defend Carlton and understand Carlton mode. And that has translated into like my everyday life. Sometimes people may say, oh, he, he's so to himself or he's so standoffish. It's not that I want to be, it's just like that whole fear of rejection and being judged for something that, why do we have to be judged for who we love? Like that's so lame to me. Even now, I could see people going, okay, well now you've cleared the air, so you're good, right? What is that like now for you to sit here across from him? I mean, no woman. I know you wouldn't allow him to disrespect you like that. Like, I see your love. I see you guys are really passionate about each other. And I I'm always felt like a man should always have his woman's back. Like, we couldn't even just have an open communication just to be able to say, hey, this is me. Let's move forward. Let's move past this. And just that disrespect as to myself, I can never probably let that go and move past that. And I think that it's fair now to say that you probably won't get back together because you feel you're that hurt mm -hmm. and you're that disrespected and that was a red flag for you. Yes. I think what, I, what I'm hearing from both of you is, is regret that, that that scene ever played itself out. It's disappointing that, like, you know, there is a line drawn um, because my sole purpose of coming here today, as much as I didn't want to, <laughs> I wanted to make it clear that I am here for you, no matter what was said or what we've been through, at the end of the day, you're like my ex-fiance in real life. Forgiveness sometimes means let's 
create something beautiful through all the darkness. And today I would like for it to be the start of um, creating something really beautiful. And I'm not proposing to you before you like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> She's looking at me like, uh, are you really gonna do it? I'm gonna get down on one knee and just apologize again um, at eye level. And I hope that you take this ring again as a sig like a significant piece of our friendship and the start of something beautiful um, without any type of like plan or like this is our plan of action. Look familiar? <laughs> did you go in the pool for that? Sure did. <laughs> sure did. I do. I accept your apology and your and I do forgive you. All right, well I think I'm supposed to put it on your finger first. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh -oh, it don't fit anymore. Oh, oh. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> wow. I'm never speechless. Oh. Yeah. Trust me, never happens. But that was. I don't, I don't know what to say. Yeah. Thank you. And that's what today's all about. Well, another relationship that had everyone talking from the moment she proposed to the moment he said, "I don't." <laughs> Giannina and Damien. I want to ask you. Damien Powers, will you marry me? I will marry you. I'll marry you too. I needed someone strong, because I need to be able to really be me. I felt closer and a stronger connection with her than I have anyone else before. You guys were fiery from the get-go. There was a lot of passion. Damien, have you ever have you ever dated someone like G before? I could combine all of them together and there would still be no. <laughs> <laughs> well, so G, you, the proposal heard around the world. <laughs> did you know you were gonna get down on your knee and propose to Damien or did that just happen in the moment, in the pod, you're like, I'm doing this? I had no idea I was gonna do that. Really? I didn't, no. what I, <laughs> I mean, I wish I could say and be like, yeah, like I was gonna propose to him, and, but I, Everything that Damien was saying to me while we were in the pods, he always spoke about wanting to find his equal. And that's always what I wanted too. And that's what made me say like, we're soulmates. It was the first time where I felt like, if he says yes, then okay. Like we are so in this and it's not even funny how we're gonna be in it. Cause it was just, he sees me and he gets me. Yeah. But then you go all the way to the wedding day. So do you think that you and Damien weren't ready? I mean, yeah, I, looking back, I, I respect his decision. Um, I feel like where we are now is just, it's so right for us where we can just date and, you know, he has his own place, I have my own place, and we, we're getting to know each other at our own pace and it's just so refreshing and it hurt so much, but it's all about, you know, what, what can I do with that? And what did I learn from that? Yeah. Yeah, well, you mentioned that. I mean, it was it was hard, I think, for all of us to watch both of your emotional reactions to, to that day. You yes. blamed everything on me, and all I did was tell you how I felt, and I wanted to work everything out with you. Chief. I wanted to work it out so bad. This is you running, so and I'm trying, to, I'm trying to talk to you right now. And I know what happened today was embarrassing, and you'll never forgive me for it. And I'm sorry. You messed up. Honestly, that was such bullshit. You can take your bow back. I mean, looking back on that, would you have done anything different on that wedding day? No. Why not? It was definitely a strong love from the beginning. Um, and we, we pushed through a lot of challenges, as did everyone here. But I wanted it every day since the day I told her I loved her in the pods. And it turned into our love story, but she was in and out of it so much. You know, the butterflies aren't there, the, you know, stuff even like the, the sex conversation. But getting to the day of the wedding, me and her had talked, and I said, look, no matter what happens, we leave this together. And she's like, yeah, we do. You know, she, when she said, I do, I didn't, I didn't expect that. Um, I thought she was going to be the one to say, I don't, and I was going to say, okay, well, I don't either. I'll walk away with you. 
I wish I could take the pain away from her that day and the hurt um, and, the, and the embarrassment, you know, to, to her family and friends. I'm sorry that I ever put her through that. I am, and to you, I'm sorry. Um, but that was the hardest decision I probably ever made in my life, honestly. And I would, I would stick by it again because of where we are now. So, okay, I love, love that you are proving that love is blind. This is beyond the show. And how has your relationship evolved since we stopped filming? So, I mean, right after, you know, there was a lot of things that we both needed to come into terms with. You know, I was so afraid of, of driving this person away that I was just instinctively doing it anyway. I guess like the whole thing of me is that I self-sabotage and I'm aware of that. And um, I felt because we were in the pods and we would communicate so well that he could instinctively tell, but he couldn't, he couldn't read my mind. He couldn't know these things. So when I felt frustrated, I just let it out in very, you know, non-constructive, insensitive ways. And, you know, looking, especially looking back at it now, it's just like, how did you ever, you know, come about and be so calm and patient with me and I really just want to take that time to apologize to you and I never wanted to hurt you either. <laughs> you know, we both have expressed ourselves in, you know, really hard ways. Um, but, you know, since the show, it's just, it's, it's been such an amazing journey with you to, to get to know you and to see how we integrate with each other's lives and my friends and family love you. <laughs> and so it's just all these fears that were never there in the first place. So I'm so happy. <laughs> I love that you guys have the wherewithal to be able to see your faults. And I don't mean that in a negative way, but to see what it is you have to work on. I'm so proud of you guys and I love your love. Well, Kelly and Kenny were a couple that seemed solid from the beginning, but as the experiment went on, fans were surprised to see that maybe things weren't as perfect as they initially seemed. We were able to make this commitment to each other, and then we haven't, you know, had sex yet. I know how I feel about it. Like, how do you feel about it? We are just so perfect on every level. Right. And I just like don't want to throw that in the mix just yeah. yet. And that's why I keep saying like I'm not in love with him because I feel like if I was in love, like I would have that infatuation like nothing else matters. The emotion was there because there were senses of guilt, there senses of embarrassment, you know, getting my friends and family involved with it. Uh, didn't even know how this would ever come to fruition and be portrayed to the masses. And quite honestly, it doesn't matter. So, you know, I, I love the fact that I was able in that moment to share that. I think about all the takeaways I went through on the show. I've applied to my current relationship and I've been able to be vulnerable and I've received it. My takeaway at this point is that I am not embarrassed by anything uh, and that is, that is why I'm supposed to be here, is to, to hopefully impact others, to, to make them feel supported in times of fear and in times of doubt because there's nothing you can't overcome. I say Kenny for president. Right? So, yep. um, Kelly, <laughs> it was hard. At what point did you know you were going to say, I don't? Right. Um, I mean, I can see now how emotional you are. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, from, like, from day one of watching the show back, it's definitely brought up every emotion. I cried not just of, not just from my journey, but like Carlton's, like everybody made me cry. <laughs> I think with Kenny and my relationship, I think we both agreed to an I don't way before the wedding. And for me, it's like, although yes, I was not like that girl that like planned like everything of her wedding to a T as like a dream, you know, like this is how my wedding's gonna be. But like, I imagined like how my wedding would be like, I wanted a bridal shower. I wanted those things. I wanted the conventional. And, you know, I'm like, you guys, like, I just, I'm like, I don't know how you did it. I kept saying my head and my heart are not connecting. My head and my heart are not connecting. They're not in the right place. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, something for me is that what I have learned, what I have reflected on is the fact that, Kenny, you, 
were amazing. And you're a great guy. And I did love you. <laughs> I did love you. I was not in love with you, as we mentioned, but mm -hmm. I did love you, and I wanted to continue our journey of dating and getting to know one another, you know, and that didn't happen. And, you know, it's water under the bridge now, and I'm so happy for you and your relationship. But um, I think I just, ne I needed time. For me, it's like, again, Kenny being like such a great guy, I have friend zoned a lot of those great guys in my life. And those are probably all the guys that I should be marrying. <laughs> now it's like, Kelly, stop, you know, stop thinking like, well, we attract who we are. Put it out there into the universe, like, what are you gonna accept now into your life? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what well, love story that ended in two I do's <laughs> is Amber and Barnett. Well, what? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you said I do and she said I do. Barnett, that's two I do's. Oh. <laughs> okay. You guys pulled the trigger, you both said I do, you oh, yeah. got married, and it's been, what, over it's, a year now? So how's it been? It's been a wild ride, I'd say. <laughs> It's a... Uh, <laughs> Lots of laughs. Yeah, we... A lot of fun. All we do is have fun. Like, I mean... That's... We, not all we do. <laughs> we've had we've had the normal, like, you know, arguments <clears throat> and stuff that everybody probably has, but, shoot. I'm, I'm really excited that we found each other and have gotten to, like, grow together over the last year. I mean, really, it's been crazy. It's it's been, it's been a great adventure, and I'm, I'm actually really proud of how far we've come from where we were in the pods and how fast the process kind of was. I know there is one point where we almost broke because we had such expectations out of what we wanted out of a husband and wife, and we knew we were married and we knew we were in love, but also we were still learning each other. I was working as a cocktail waitress, and there was a while I was making Matt so uncomfortable, like I wasn't working. So that was putting strain because I was so financially dependent on him, which was new to me. I've never been financially dependent on somebody before. Like, I've always had to figure that out for myself and had friends that helped me along the way, but being financially dependent on him was, you know, something that was totally new. And then I think him, y'all saw how he liked to flirt with people, so obviously he was totally used to his, his bachelor life. And I was used to my bachelor life too, but I, I think it took us a while to figure out how to, like, hang out and party together. So and be I respectful. Just, yeah. Yes. Normally in a relationship, as you're dating, you take time and you adjust to that. But we were married, so immediately we expected it to be different, to be changed. And we weren't kind of giving the giving it the time that it needed to adjust. Interesting. To get used to it. I at one point actually had called about potentially like getting the divorce lawyer. I was like, this isn't working. Something you threw the D word out. Not, yeah. I <laughs> different. Sorry, Mama Barnett, I love you. Just kidding. Um <laughs> I'm a stubborn asshole. He so <laughs> it's, it's, it's Which I'm <laughs> stubborn too. So we, we butted heads a lot. And that took time to figure out how to do because when we were still in the bubble on the show, we hadn't really butt heads at that point. So, because everything was just so perfect. But seeing how we both are so stubborn and strong minded and bullheaded, um, when we butt heads, it could be bad. Like it could be intense. So figuring out how to handle that, it, made a huge difference for us. Yeah, we, we stopped trying to force like what we expected on each other. And <clears> like once once that happened, you know, I don't know, it's just nothing but really good things since then. Well, I love that you guys have found what you need to to have a lasting relationship and that is working on these challenges. Well, you guys are happy yeah, clearly you. and mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's a beautiful thing. So it's great <laughs> to see. So for Mark and Jessica, their relationship kept us on the edge through the entire experiment we wanted to see how this was gonna unfold, so check out this clip. In the outside world, I would have never looked twice at Mark. I would have, you know, figured out his age or maybe that he was a fitness instructor and that would be something maybe I wouldn't have been into. Usually I'm someone who runs before commitment, but Mark has exceeded every expectation. Taking those vows, it's a huge commitment and it's something I take very seriously. Jessica. What's it like for you to watch that over and watch your relationship with Mark on the show? Yeah, um, actually I kind of like looked down because I've seen it all um, and I don't need to see it again. Um, yeah, it's, it's tough, you know, because watching it back, it was obvious that, you know, I was working through some things. Um, I just didn't really like the person that I saw and the things that played out, you know, obviously I was 
really uncomfortable and I was drinking too much and you know that was really disturbing to, to see play out and some of the comments that I made um, that were derogatory. And that certainly wasn't fair to Mark, who's a fantastic person and obviously very, very attractive. I've gotten a lot of <laughs> messages about that and it's that is, was never a concern whatsoever and you knew that. I need to start with a friendship, which ultimately, you know, that's not a good situation to sign yourself up for when you need something that's you know, gonna maybe progress a little bit slower. Mark, I wanna ask you, what, what in your opinion was the, the reason or maybe reasons that it didn't work out with Jessica? Um, wow. Um, I think we were just two people trying to figure it out. I mean, we got engaged in 10 days, you know, and I think that you get into the situation and, you know, maybe we just, I, myself, like I didn't realize how much all of it was, how intense it was. And I think we were just both just trying to figure it out. And, you know, she is a phenomenal woman. I still, like, to this day, like, a year and a half has gone by, and I still, like, I learned so many values, and so I have, still have so much respect for you, uh, no matter what happened and what went down. Um, I've become a better man. I know you are introspective, and I know you've done the same thing, and, like, I couldn't be more thankful to go through it with someone like you. And I think that's why, if anybody asks, that's why, like, oh, Mark kind of, like, feels strung along. No, like, we did have really powerful, like, strong moments, even when we were in person. It's almost like I blinded myself, you know, no pun intended, because I had these kind of thoughts about the age difference, and I annoyed the living hell out of myself. It's tough watching it back. Um, but seeing the connection that we had, you know, obviously that surpassed any differences that we had, which we found out were many. I think we just needed more time, yeah, you know? I agree. And to commit to him that that was gonna be forever, he didn't deserve that, because I wasn't there. I will say, and like, I know that we're all here to kind of like clear the air and everything like that. I wish you would have told me, like the Barnett, I, I feel like we, I thought we cleared the air about like that. Like if you were still had like, like whatever reoccurring feelings of like how Barnett or anybody else that was in the experience, like. I feel like that could have been an obstacle we could have talked about and tackled together. Yeah, so I just saw the behaviors that I have, you know, in the real world, where I normally go after something that's unavailable. And, you know, I think you see that I kind of struggle with just accepting and understanding that people just can love you and accept you for who you are. And then also, I was served whiskey. <laughs> you know, the con like I said, the comment was not something that I ever should have said, and that's truthfully not how I have felt in the moment, so I don't know how to answer it. I really didn't have those feelings for him at that time. Uh, um, not the whole, like, the pressure and, like, what you were feeling, like, that day. Like, I still remember it. And, like, I, I am sorry that, like, we got kind of sucked into this vacuum. But, and I'm sorry that we didn't really get that chance and opportunity to, like, really get to know each other and get to know each other's friends, family, and who, what we stand for. But at the end of the day, like, I still respect you and I still am thankful for all of this. And I know that, like, no matter what you decide to do moving forward, like, you're gonna be even better off and like kicking ass, so. I was always honest and I get a lot of hate for that, you know? You, you I was always, you felt. I was always you honest know. from day one. That it wasn't fair, for sure. So I'm sorry. He still never made me Italian beef, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> he said that the first day. And he still I made totally forgot about that. Just I mean, we can, make that happen. Yeah. we can make that happen. It's not too late for that. <laughs> well, guys, obviously, while not every relationship has a fairy tale ending, Lauren and Cameron's relationship had the happy ending <laughs> everybody was rooting for. Before, I wasn't really that happy, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I think it was because I felt like I was missing you. I've never had a man so just willing to show me how much he loves me. So you got to catch us up now. How has married life, how has it been? We really started to get to know each other more and do things together that we've never done. I mean, of course, coming from different backgrounds, as they said so much on the show. Um, <laughs> but you know, it's like we're able to teach each other things that the other may not have, have experienced or enjoyed. So I feel like Cameron has opened my eyes to so many things. Like he teaches me stuff every day. He's so loving, he's so genuine. Um, he got me a puppy. We have a fur baby, like life is good. I think people often think that changing who you are is a negative thing. I mean, Lauren's an amazing woman, obviously, we all know that. Just being with her, I feel like changed me in, in many ways. I mean, watching the show back, 
I mean, it was still me, but I, I've, I feel like I've evolved over time because yeah. I've become more like her in a lot of ways. I mean, I don't think that changes either after you get married. It's just like you kind of continue to evolve into yeah, yeah. each oh. other. Yeah. I actually yeah. wanted yeah. to know whose idea was the fur baby. Oh, me. That, oh, was, that was a part of like, right. I was like, if we get married, I have to get a puppy. He's yeah, like, that well, was in our marriage agreement. The yeah, thing for so. my mom was she had known that I had always said, like, I would never date a yeah. woman who wanted to have a dog, which sounds crazy in <laughs> retrospect. <laughs> but gonna... She knew it was true love because I told her, yeah, we're going to get a dog, and that was something we agreed on. So yeah. she was sold. She knew it was true love. His right. name's Spark. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because of Spark. Because yeah. of Spark. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah. 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 It's cute. Yeah. It's cute. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like the fur baby, we got a fur baby, and that was like, we're then committing to seeing what we would be like as parents. Like, oh, right. yeah. Are y'all excited about that opportunity? Is that like actively happening? We're definitely excited. Like we've already talked about like our kids could look like anything from this to this. It could be Drake. It could be Barack Obama child. Right. <laughs> you know, so we are just one day. They're gonna be gorgeous. Hopefully soon. soon. Oh, thank you. You know, we got we gotta talk about dad. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Papa, Papa Speed. Speed. Papa Speed, he kept, <laughs> he kept, it, he kept it real. He did. I mean, if I think about how it would be if my daughter came to me and said, hey, Dad, I'm getting married to somebody that you don't know and haven't ever met, I, I can I only imagine. Wall, yeah, it, like... yeah. You're a white guy, she's a black woman. Let's talk about that. I had a serious relationship prior to meeting Lauren. We dated for five years. Okay. She was a black woman. I've experienced being in an interracial relationship mm -hmm. where you know, people have issues. Well, that's not everything, but right. it's certainly going to play a factor in how sure. you live in the world. Your daughter is the most amazing woman I've ever met. I fell in love with her without ever having seen her. I don't judge you by anything other than how you treat her. I appreciate that. Okay, let's see how this goes. Lauren's dad, I mean, I love him, you know, and, and we're family. I mean, he loves Lauren so much, and, um... Here we go, crying again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we have that in common, and uh, also, too, I mean, Lauren has a strong connection with her father, so, I mean, it makes sense that I would love him, too, because, mm. you know, he, she's emulated him, and in a lot of ways, she's her own person, but, you know, they have a lot in common. At first, I was kind of nervous because me and my dad are so close. <laughs> Sorry. And I've never really introduced him to, like, a boyfriend, so... For me to introduce, like, Cameron as my fiancé for the first time, like, him ever meeting anybody, I mean, that was a lot on his own. But for me, it was kind of scary. And But Cameron was cool as a fan the whole time. He's like, you know, I'll win him over. It's all good. I'll just be me. <laughs> um, so, of course, I was nervous. But, you know, I'm, I'm happy that things turned out great. Both of our families are so important to us. I love Cameron's family, like his mom, his dad, his sister. Like, I visited Maine a couple times. They showed me the deers. Honey, I was <laughs> out there in the apple orchard. It was great. Um, so, I mean, you know, me coming from Detroit, the city, like, that's like a whole new world to me. I felt like Jasmine and uh, Aladdin on the carpet. <laughs> uh, it was, yeah, but, I mean, it's beautiful just how our families have blended and merged. Like, we just had, whew, I feel like I'm snotty to y'all. No, here we go. Get a tissue right here, girl. Okay. Oh, it's oh, oh, stinky. Oh. Stop it. We just had Thanksgiving together for the first time with both of our families recently, awesome. and that was like so beautiful to see like our dads getting together, bonding, right. drinking bourbon, the like the our bills. moms baking in the kitchen, the dog running crazy. <laughs> It was just like, wow, like it was such a beautiful moment. I'm I'm uh, I'm getting emotional too because it's uh, Sorry. And I yeah. just commend your families and all of your families who are coming together to accept you for who you are and to trust your judgment and right. to trust your opinion. This is true, this is real, this is who you are and this mm -hmm. is the man that you love and your dad accepted that, he didn't hold you back. So you can honestly truly say, love is blind. I truly believe that you guys are finding yourself, if not have found yourselves through this process. Yep. And sometimes it took a route of finding a guy and going to Mexico with him. Right. Sometimes it took a route of saying some stuff on TV that you think is cringeworthy. And sometimes it took a route of running down the streets of Atlanta, Georgia in a wedding dress. <laughs> <laughs> the process I've ever ran in my life. <laughs> and I am just, I'm so amazed. And I could honestly, and I believe that Nick and I have said this, that this was called a social experiment, a love experiment, if mm. you will, but ultimately, 
These are your real emotions. This is your heart. Absolutely, yeah. Even if the end result wasn't marriage, for all of you in this love experiment, it clearly affected how each of you looks at love and relationships today. We've all said we've learned a lot from this experience. Mark, what, what have you learned walking away from, from this experience? Um, I think that all of the things that we went through like prepared me for who I'm supposed to be. And that's why I'm like forever thankful for this experience. Yeah, and I think I think now I'm standing, you know, much stronger, much more kind of independent, knowing who I am, and I'm gonna be much. I'm gonna be ready, you know, once I find the right person. I've definitely learned that at the moment that you feel like you love someone and they love you, like there's no fear involved in love. Um, you should be able to let go and just completely be yourself. And that, like everything at the core of it, is love. Self-love in particular. If you can't accept yourself, your flaws, your you know great moments, the, the things that you think are so cringeworthy that you're afraid to show that other person, if you can't accept those, then you're not gonna be able to allow someone in. All right, you guys, one last round of raise your hands. Should we in. do it? <laughs> <laughs> Even if in the end, marriage wasn't in it for you guys. Raise your hands if you think love really can be blind. <laughs> wow. Yeah? Wow. <laughs> I think we leave it there, you guys. It says it all, right? It says yeah. it all. Thank you again so much to these wonderful humans, these incredible individuals who have opened up their hearts. And then open themselves up again to share how they're doing now. So guys, again, thank you for your honesty. Thank you for giving all of yourselves to this experiment. And thank you for loving each other. Love is Blind, season one, down in the books. Yeah. <laughs>